Welcome back aliens. My name is Navin Reddy. In the last video, we have talked about how do you provide this login access, right? So we can enter username and password and you will get authenticated. But then, you know, uh, we are verifying. So if I go to my login.java, you can see we are verifying using the static values. We have a Telisco and L as a username and password. Now, this is not how we write code, right? We always make sure that the data is there is coming from database. But question arises, how do we do that here? We have not done any database code yet, right? So the best thing would be, you have to create a database first and let's populate our database so that we can verify. So step one, let's create a database. So again, you can use any database which you like. You can go for uh, MySQL, you can go for Postgres, you can go for Oracle, which is your favorite. Uh, I will go for MySQL here because this is my favorite. If I open MySQL Workbench, this is the GUI version, right? And I already have a local instance created here. And if you don't know how to, how to use this, do watch my video on how to use MySQL Workbench. Uh, but if you already know, that's, let's continue. So first of all, we have to create, create a data database, right? Uh, in fact, we, I do have lots of databases here. But let me create one or let me use my Navin database. As you can see, we already have a Navin database here. I will use that one. In that database, I do have some tables, but ignore those tables for time being. Uh, I will say create, uh, okay, I will say use Navin first. I will say use Navin. So I'm using this database and now I want to create a table. So I will say create table and I'll mention the table name as let's say login. I mean, there should be a logical name for this. Login will do for this example. I will say login and in this login, I want some fields, right? So I will say the first is username, that is your name of type varchar, which will, which will be of length 20. And then we'll be having a password, we'll say password. And again, this one, instead of saying password, we'll simply say pass. And we'll say this is varchar and this is also 20. Again, you can have more than 20, uh, 20 uh, text, so you can change it in that way you can have a username of 50 letters if you can have a password of 100 letters if you want to torture your audience or your or your clients okay we got this table here <coughs> let me execute this query and you can see we got our table ready now let's insert some data here just de some demo data so that we can verify we'll say insert into login there should be a registration form for this again you can write your code you can create a form for a user to register themselves. But time and let's imagine if you already have data here. So I will say insert into login values. I'm inserting some values here. I will say the name is Naveen. I will, will have a small letter N. So that's my username, Naveen. And my password would be, let's say, uh, nine. Okay, this is my password, which is 9876. Again, that's, uh, you can have any password there. So let me just run this query. Let's see if it's getting inserted and everything is fine. It is it got inserted. Let's have one more dummy value. Uh, let's say this is, um, okay, we can have any one. We can say uh, Tusk. And the password for Tusk would be, let's say Tusk. We have a username and password both as Tusk. So if I run this query, you can see it is working. Let's fire the select query just to verify if we got the data there. So if I say select star from login, and if I say run, you can see it is working. We got Navin 9876 and we got Tusk and Tusk. That's, that sounds good, right? Now what's the next thing? The next thing is once you got your database already, once you got a table, let's verify using, uh, using Java code. Now how do I do that? Now first of all, when you say you want to verify you, this is not the right way, right? This is not the right way of verifying it. Normally, whenever you want to connect with database, uh, there are different layers we work with. We work with. This is not a big application. We can write the Java code here itself. In fact, we can write the Java code in this in this method itself. Instead of this if condition here, we can write the Java code. But then, what will make more sense is if you create a separate class, because whenever you work with database, it's, just, it, it's having a separate class will always. I mean, it will, it will always give some advantage. And that separate class will always be in a different package. Okay, not compulsory, but then it's better to have that in that way. I will say this is login DAO. Now, DAO is a special keyword which you should know. Uh, DAO simply means, no, it's not a keyword, but it's a standard we always use. DAO stands for Data Access Object. So whenever you want to interact with database, uh, it's better to work with DAO classes. 
and i will say this is belongs to dao package again you can you can use login repository you can say login database you can say anything you want but dao makes more sense and if i click on finish you got your class here dao class now in this dao class i will be having a method called as public and i will i will say this method will return boolean so if you want to verify if if this login was successful you will say true if the login failed you can say false i will say check uh details or check credentials we can you can use anything we, we can say check details or we can say only check <laughs> okay anything will do right so we can say check details check credentials so let's have a check method which will take two parameters one is username and the second one is password right both need to be taken uh, both will be taken here and once you got these values let's return false by default it will be false right okay now how do you verify so first of all to, to connect with database we have to write certain steps now if you have if you know how to work with jdbc uh, you can continue otherwise what i would recommend is if you have not learned jdbc before uh, do watch my video on jdbc first because that then it will make more sense uh, you will find those videos in the description area uh, so make sure that, that you know how to use how to work with jdbc now first of all when you work when you want to work with jdbc we work with different type of dbms right in this example i'm working with mysql maybe you want to work with oracle for different DBMS, we have different jar files which you have to work with. And those jar files are normally called as connectors. Now question arises from where I will get the jar file. Now you have two choices. You can download this jar file from the internet, okay, from anywhere. Uh, I guess I already have that jar file here. So if I say MySQL connector, you can see I do have that file, uh, this MySQL connector. I just have to say show all in finder. Okay, I do have that somewhere. Uh, okay, if I want to check the location for this, I will say Rebel in Finder. Okay, if you are using uh, Windows, you can uh, you can actually search that. What I will do time being is I will put that file on a desktop, right? So we just want this MySQL connector to be used. Okay, this is one way. The another way is you can actually get the jar file using Maven. So if you are if you are family with Maven, you can convert this existing project into Maven. Okay, and then you can add your jar file. Uh, not needed in this project, but then you know we can actually try it out. So you can right click here and you can say configure, click on convert to Maven project. You will get a Maven project and you can add that jar file using just a text. Again, it's your choice. Time being, I will not convert to Maven. Let's use the same project. So when you want to use the same project, what you have to do is you have to paste that jar file in this lib folder. So paste it here. And you can see we got MySQL connector. Now, if you don't have the jar file with you, uh, what you can do is you can just go to, uh, you can you can use Google to search for that or you can go to Maven repository. And in this Maven repository, search for MySQL connector. Okay, so if you go here, you can, you can select any version. I will prefer the stable version. I will go for 4.1.41 and you can click on download jar. So this is one way you can download, okay? But using Maven, it will be very easy. But okay, it's your choice again. So this is where you will get this jar file. Just click on download. You will get the jar file. Just add it in the lib folder. Now we have to also add that because for develop developing also we need that. So we'll go to properties. We'll go to Java build path. And here as well, I will add that particular jar file. So I will click on add jar files. I will navigate to my desktop. I will say mask or connector. Done. Okay. Now let's write our steps. The first step is you have to create, you have to load the class. So I will say class dot for name. Ignore that error of Eclipse. So yeah, class dot for name. And inside this, you have to mention com dot mysql. What's happening? Com dot mysql dot jdbc dot driver. Okay, we got our class. Oh, it might throw an exception. So let's everything, let's put everything inside a try block. Okay. And let's generalize it to exception so that I don't have to write try block once again. Okay, so we got class dot for name. The next step you have to create a connection object. Uh, we'll say connection con equal to uh, driver manager dot get connection. Again, there are multiple ways of getting this connection object. We can use data source. We can use yeah, we can use data source. We can use uh, different tools available, right? Uh, we can use the uh, a connection pooling concept. But time and let's make it simple. I will simply use a URL here. 
for database i will say string url and the url for mysql is jdbc colon mysql colon double slash localhost colon 3306 as dbms changes this link will also change and the my database name is naveen right so we got this thing we got a url here the next thing is username uh, we got username we got this username and the username is root and we'll say string password is equal to zero for my case the password is zero okay so we got this url then we got a username and we got a password right so we need these three things so we got url we got username and we got password uh i guess i don't know why it is giving that symbol just ignore okay just ignore that okay so we got url username and password the next step is you have to get a statement object this is database steps right uh, again if you're not familiar with this do watch my videos on jdbc that will make more sense okay we'll say create statement or a prepared statement will make more sense here because i'm passing the values right so i will say prepared statement but then how will you fire this query now that's that is important right what query you will fire now how do you verify we have that username and password which is correct now there are different ways of implementing it what you can do is you can you can fetch the entire table and you can verify each and every record you can run a loop and you can navigate to the loop you can find the username and password is matching or not but then don't you think you are fetching the entire table uh, that doesn't make sense right so what i will do is i will create a query which will be a bit efficient than normal query we'll say select uh, we'll say select star from uh, from login but then where i will say where you name is equal to question mark and pass is equal to question mark now we'll replace those question marks okay first of all let me just write it as sql here we'll replace those question mark we'll say search string let, let's replace the first question mark with you name and let's replace oh i just made a mistake here the problem is this password and this password is same I will make this as pass okay that will be better and this would be the password for the database which is this one so this is my password this is database password uh, that's weird i know i will say st dot set string and we'll say two and this will be pass okay what will happen now is when you fire the query example if i say username is naveen and password is uh, any, any password so it will try to match if it will try to match this thing with a database and of course if i have my entry there with that username and password it will return something otherwise it will return nothing that's what we want to do we just have to fire the query we'll say result set rs let's import the package and i will say st dot execute query now if if i simply check if rs dot next if there is a record then return true it's that simple this is what we want to do okay let me just do this once again let's say if i enter the username and password okay the username which i entered now is naveen and the password is 9876 so the fa the query would be select star okay the query will become select star from login where your name is equal to uh naveen and the password or the pass in this case is equal to nine eight seven six if this is the data which i'm entering in the in the uh, while login and if i run this query you can see we got a record but let's say if i make a mistake let's say if i am entering a wrong password now in this scenario if i run this query you can see we got nothing that's what we want to do if uh, if we got something after firing the query that means it is a valid user otherwise he's not a valid user is that simple right now once you once we have done this code let's go back here and let's create an object of login DAO. again you can create that object anywhere you can create a reference uh, somewhere here or just for this example not a good practice again i'm creating the object it's inside this i will say login DAO. we'll say DAO equal to new login DAO. let's import the package as well here itself let's say import the package okay package is imported and here i will say instead of checking that thing we'll say dao dot uh, check with that username and particular password whatever username and password you got and that's it your job is done if it is verified if it will work otherwise it will not work let's verify let's run this code right click run as run on server i think it should work let's verify 
it's running it's running it's running waiting for the console waiting for the browser to pop up okay i got my firefox browser here hey i don't want to make your default pass default browser okay so if i say welcome uh, dot jsp now and you can see we got a login page let's verify with telesco and l and this will not work of course because i don't have that data there the data which i have is naveen and the password is 97 okay that is 9876 if i click on login you can see it is working now right if i go back if i log out and if i give a wrong data example if i said task and task one if i give a wrong password you can see it is not working is it it's not working can you see that but if i give a right username and right password task it's we got the login right so that's how we can verify with database so try it out and let me know if you have a better solution in the in the comment section so if you think we have we do have a better solution than this uh comment section is open for you so that if if i feel that is better i will make a i will surely make a video on that as well and yeah so we have we are expanding this project uh, like anything we are uh, okay so we got the login now with the help of uh database maybe in the next video we'll talk about how to do client-side validations right so make sure that you subscribe to the channel to get the gist of it and that's it thank you so much for watching